Good afternoon, YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to be releasing a new workout program, and this is for the strength focused power building novice. So a couple days ago, I released a hypertrophy focused power building program. It's a little less specific, but there's progression built in. So that way you can still get stronger on the competition lifts, the squat, bench and deadlifts, but it's more general. You cover you more exercise variations, you do other movement patterns, and you are trying to build a more complete physique. In this program, it's going to be slightly more minimalistic, but it's also going to be much more focused toward building the squat, bench, and deadlift. So that if that is your goal, this program is for you. So let's get into the actual video. So the way the program works is that it is a basic novice program that has taken after many of the other novice programs that I have reviewed on the channel, have criticized, and um, have my thoughts on. But here's the thing. For novices, they are a great entry point and especially for trying to get stronger i do think that they do have their value they do have their purpose and they will help you for quite a while but i think that there are a couple modifications that should be made and that's what i'm trying to address with this program so it's a three times per week full body plus a gap workout so this gap workout uh, i'm taking that um term from christian thibodeau one of my favorite uh sources of information and basically this workout is your gpp day let's say you do calisthenics on that day you do cardio on that day or a day where you just do really light bodybuilding type work just to cover your bases that you kind of didn't include on the main workout sessions um, or that i didn't include on the main workout sessions during the full body portion of the workout there are there is an element of three sets of five linear progression but on the pressing movement, so the bench and the overhead press, there is an introduction to evolving rep ranges. So there's more volume, you do slightly more sets, you do slightly more reps because in traditional novice programs, everything is a three by five, everything is a five by five, maybe a one by five for the deadlift. But here's the issue. The squat, the bench and the deadlift do not respond the same way to um, the same amount of volume. In my experience, if you want to get really good with pressing, if you want to build a lot of upper body muscle, you need volume more than anything else. Strength for the upper body movement will come from volume more than it will from intensity. You can push as heavy as you want for all, uh, all day, all, all year, but you're not actually going to get that much stronger unless you build a wide base of volume. So I wanted to address that with how I wrote this program. Next, low volume accessory work with intensiveness techniques. So for the novice trainee, I truly think that they should just get in, get out. They don't need to be spending all their time in the gym. They don't need to be doing too, a lot of work. They're, the amount of work that they need to do to actually build quality muscle isn't even that much. So why waste their time? Just get in, get out, become really consistent and go from there. There is a novice program out there that I'm not a huge fan of that basically is just strong lifts with a shit ton of accessories. But the thing is, this is very time consuming for the novice. The novice will struggle with being consistent and they might even struggle with actually being able to adapt and recover to it just because their threshold is so low. Furthermore, the fact that there's just all these accessories thrown in, it just kind of like uh, uh, necessary for the most part. And I just think there's, there is a better way to distribute that work uh, over time or over the course of the program, right? So next, there is the implementation of last set AMRAPs or plus sets. And the way that the program itself is structured is an odd week slash even week setup with elements of the heavy light medium and like i said it is inspired by starting strength strong lift 5 by 5s grayskull lp i would say grayskull lp and the works of faz lifts have been the most influential in the development of this program let's see so who is this for like i mentioned it's for the strength focused power builder you want size you don't want to just run these minimalist programs you actually want to build muscle along with getting stronger, but getting stronger is the goal. So strength is the focus, size is the prize. The trainee should have at least a year or so, maybe close to a year under their belt. The only thing I really want here is just the fact that you know how to already do the power lifts. This is not a program where you're learning how to move. This is not a program for you to learn how to exercise. I have another novice program on here that is actually meant for that, where you are doing the compound lifts very minimally, just because I just want you to get good at exercising first. Get good at exercising, get good at moving your body, get good at being consistent, and then you can hop onto a program that's more specialized for strength, size, whatever. And then having consistency down. You need to be consistent. It doesn't matter what program you're running. If you're not consistent, if you're not applying proper effort, it doesn't matter what program you run, it's not going to be good for you. So, next, let's actually go into the program.
Oh, let's go here. Cool. So, like I said, it's an odd week, even week setup. So, odd week, week one, week three, week five, so on and so forth. And you just kind of milk that for as long as you can. Because you're a novice, you can just milk linear progression for as long as you possibly can. Okay. And then even weeks. So, it's not as simple as a, you know, workout A, workout B, then ABA, um, BAB, and you'll see why. So in the first odd, uh, so in odd week, workout one, you're going to start out with the deadlift. I personally prefer starting out with the deadlift on my training just because you have two days of rest, you're fully recovered, and then you can deadlift. I know that there's some people kind of want like uh, more time to get to the point where they deadlift. They just want to like warm up, like essentially like with the days to get into the deadlift. And if that's okay, and that's fine. You can alter the days um, and modify it to you just, but for the purpose of the program, deadlift starts out week one. You are going to do a top set of five. Now, when I say a top set of five, one thing that's really important is it's not about what you can lift for five reps. It's about what you can lift for five reps with good form. If your form breaks down, I don't care that you got five reps. You should have clean, crisp form and progress from there. Weight progression only matters so long as your technique is maintained. So you're going to go up to a set of five. So let's say you hit 225 for four. Um, I would either... Drop down the weight, then do a set of five, and then continue on into the drop set because it follows up with a drop set. Or let's say the next week, rather than dropping down, you just keep going to 225, seeing if you can actually get 225 with clean form. If you can't, drop down. But sometimes what ends up happening that I've, I've seen with some novices is that they do their goal is one set of a five rep max. On one, on one week, they think they can get five, but they only get four. They come in next week, they hit that same weight, they get it for five. That might be the case. If that's not the case, drop down. But anyway, one major difference between this and like, let's say strong lifts, uh, starting strength is usually they'll just have you do that one set of five because you are getting a lot of your volume from the warmups. And I think that's good. But the thing is, is most novices are just not all that strong. So their five rep max is actually a fairly light weight. So the actual amount of tonnage and volume you're accumulating up to that point really isn't all that much. So what I found to be recoverable from that is effective is just doing two drop sets. And you're going to aim for three to eight reps. So here I would really recommend a 10 to 20% reduction in load. So honestly, I, I'm much more on the side of taking a larger drop down. So 20%. So you lighten the low by 20% and you hit two sets of three to eight. The reason why I choose three to eight is just because it gives you like a wide enough window to actually um, work through a worthwhile range. It's low enough where you're just getting more reps, but it's also high enough that if you are, you know, if you have more of a strength endurance ability versus, you know, just actually lifting heavy weights, kind of depends, but it allows you to have brackets because I don't want you going super high rep and I don't want you just hitting singles after you do your five reps. So that's why I chose the two, uh, two sets of three to eight. And you can even do a one set where you do 10%, one set where you do 20%, or you can just do one flat uh, percentage reduction and then two sets, three to eight. Next, you're going to go into the bench press, the barbell bench press. So I chose four sets of four to six. And then there's also the added... Um, plus set. So last set cam wrap. So the reason why I chose this range, right? Mathematically, you are doing four sets of four or four sets of six. If you were to do four sets of four, that's 16 reps. If you do four sets of six, that's 24 reps. What is this very close to or very similar to? It's very similar to a three by five or a five by five. If it's, uh, it's kind of just one rep off on the 5x5 five five side of things. It's functionally speaking about the same. Now here's the thing between why I kind of prefer this. Because it's four sets of four or four sets of six, you're, I, you're pushing a bit closer to failure the more like if you were to do the four sets of six because you're going deeper into the set. I know it's not by much, but for a novice, it can make a difference. But if you were to do a four by four, you are doing... Four sets with much cleaner practice with a slightly heavier load. So you're lifting slightly heavier because you have uh, separated things into more sets than three sets. You get a little bit more practice, a little bit more touches. And for the purposes of actually building muscle, doing more sets 
is going to be more beneficial to you. To actually build um, muscle, I really recommend people try to be around eight to 12 sets minimum for per muscle part um, per week. So that's like, the, that's like the bottom end of the range as far as like volume goes. And I think this actually works very well for novices. So that's why I kind of prefer this range for the bench press and pushing movements in general versus doing a three by five. Three by five is not enough volume in my opinion to uh, build muscle, but doing four by four, four by six is a slight improvement above that, but it's still not too much of a recovery demand for the novice. Then you are gonna do a leg press, leg extension, or goblet squat. Choose one. The thing is here, right? So you have your deadlift, you have your bench, you have your squat. Heavy deadlift, moderate bench, because I want, I'm, want you to be more uh, on the volume side of things. And then light leg, um, leg extension movement. So leg fl uh, knee flexion movement. Leg pressing, hack squats, leg extensions, goblet squats. A really light variation of your uh, squat. You shouldn't be using a weight anywhere close to your actual squat run one rep max. This is really just an exercise for you to get a pump on um, and to get a little bit more volume toward the quad. So the reason why I prefer this is because in most novice programs where you just squat bench dead, squat bench dead, maybe throw in an overhead press and a chin up or a power clean in here and there. I don't really like that just because it's good, but it also runs the risk of you you know, tiring yourself pretty easily, you're going to, you might burn out, you, there's a lot of other issues that are just going to be involved as you can look into the program reviews and I can talk, and I talk about it more so in there. So here you're just doing three sets, eight to 12, really good for like a, just a general bodybuilding range. And then optional, you can superset this with calves. You don't have to, but you can. Then you're going to go into vertical pulls or bicep curls. So here I kind of am thinking more along the lines of a lat pull down. Of course, I have a bias toward pull-ups and um, movements of that nature, but given that this is a novice program, given that you might not be able to do a pull-up, I think that you can either just do like a pull-up regression, superset it with lap pull-downs, or just focus on the lap pull-down, because if you are just tired by all this already, like just do machines that because like you're already mentally fatigued, you're um, running on fume, you might be running on fumes, so doing lat pull downs will be a bit easier and you can just finish that out. Now, the reason why the volume recommendation here is so low, you're doing two sets, is because you are doing a vertical pull and a horizontal pull or a horizontal pull every training day. So you're accumulating volume through frequency rather than actually doing a lot of volume per day. So on here, you do a vertical pull, the next day you're gonna do a horizontal pull, two sets, So and then you do that three times a week, that's six sets. So that's, um, a good amount and with the addition of all the other deadlifting that you're doing your back should be fine so here one thing that i also recommend is that you do a after the last set so you do two sets of eight to twelve off after that last set you are going to do three drop sets or myo reps so one thing i really like to do with my myo reps and how i do them personally is i just do half of whatever i was doing in the set so let's say i do two sets of eight i'll do four i'll do I'll keep going until I can't do four reps and I might even increase the weight or something. That's just how I do it, but that's not, I don't think that's how it's usually done, but it's just an option, right? But drop sets are another great way to just get more volume in and condense the amount of time that you're in the gym while still getting a lot of work done. Then you go into bicep curls. Here, um, bias toward barbell or heavy curling. So. The reason why it's two sets of six to eight is because I do think that the curl is a movement that you can kind of intensify and rep ranges are representative of intensity. So being six to eight, it's a bit lower than usual. So go a bit heavier than usual. And that's day one. Next we have day three. So let's say this is Monday, this is Wednesday. You take a rest day, like in between each training day, like you would in any other novice program, strong lifts, um, starting strength, gray skull, doesn't matter. Here we're going to do what's very common across them because I actually think this works fine on the squat because generally speaking, most novices hate high rep, dead, uh, high rep squats and three sets of five with the last set AMRAP is actually really good for squats anyway. Like I actually find that to be a more than good enough way to build up your squat. So it's more than sufficient to build strength, more than sufficient to build muscle. It's just enough amount of reps for it to be tolerable, but it allows you to push a little bit more intensity. Just make sure you do that last set AMRAP. Then you're going to do barbell overhead press, four sets of four to eight. 
So here, you, when it says like four sets of four to six, four sets of four to eight, it's going to introduce you to the idea of evolving rep ranges. So let's say you do uh, four sets of eight, right? You keep going, you keep adding weight each week. Eventually you get to a point where you can't sustain four sets of eight anymore, drop down to four sets of six. And then you add weight from there, then you go to four sets of four, and then you go from there. That's one option. Or let's say you start on the low end of things. Let's say you start from the bottom up, per se. You do four sets of four, then the next week you do four sets of five, four sets of six, four sets of seven, four sets of eight, and then go from there. These are just some ideas of how to like implement it. Like that's not the exact way to um, that I always do evolving rep ranges, but it's just the simplest versions of it. Um, you can choose a weight where you hit a specific weight. So let's say for the overhead press, you're hitting 100 pounds. On the first set, you hit it for eight, then you hit it for six, then you hit it for four and four. You don't move up and wait until you can do four sets of eight. That's another way of going about it. Um, I'll make notes um, illustrating that when I in the future. <laughs> then you are going to do block pulls or power shrugs. The reason why I mentioned that the heavy light medium setup is kind of implemented into this training is because of this. You do a heavy deadlift, right? Then the next day you do a light movement that will contribute to the deadlift. The block pull is much lighter. You're doing six, six to ten reps, so I want you to stay light with this variation. You shouldn't be anywhere near the numbers you were hitting on the day before. You're really just doing this to get a little bit more practice, a little bit more hypertrophy into the muscles, just so that way it's kind of an investment, so that way the muscles and structures involved in the movement are bigger, and then it allows you to be stronger when you train for strength when you go back to the deadlift day. So, block pulls, power shrugs, great options, great options there. Then you're going to do horizontal pulls. Same thing uh, on there. You are going to do a... Oops. You are going to do... Sorry. You're going to follow the last set with drop sets or my reps, and you're going to do that for both the pull and the curls. Here, since on day one you did six to eight, I actually want you to do 10 to 15. So a lighter curl variation, like a cable curl. So bias toward cables slash machines. Do cable curls, machine curls, something light. Um, then we're going to move into day five. Day five, you're going to do a deadlift variation. So here is where I really like think movements like the stiff leg deadlift and the Romanian deadlift. Three sets, six to eight. Same thing, just light, more practice for the movements, more like building up the muscles, building up the structures that are involved, and going from there. Then you're going to do a bench press variation or doing the bench press with a lighter weight than what you used on day one. Four sets of eight, here it is just a static rep range just so that way you can accumulate more volume. So you can do dumbbell bench press, incline bench press, you can do um, incline dumbbell bench press, machine press, or you can just do the flat barbell bench press with more volume to build up the muscles, get more practice on the bar, get more practice on the movement, and go from there. Then you're going to do another straight set with box squats or pause squats. And I'd want you to make sure that you are using no more than 80% of your weight used on your first squat day or your, the squat day before. So let's say you hit 225 here for five, uh, three sets of five. Here, like you really should just be like around like maybe 135 to 185 range. Like I would kind of stick there. Um, 185 is even kind of pushing it. Like I'm just estimating mathematically. I suck at math though. Then you're going to do vertical pulls. Same thing. You are going to follow this up with drop sets, my reps, and since it's the age of 12 rep range, I would bias towards like dumbbells. So bias toward dumbbells. So hammer curls, reverse curls, zotman curls. These are great options there. So that's the odd week. Now. Next, you will go into the even week. So even week will start off on the day three workout. So it's essentially the day three workout all over again. And then you, but the, I actually made a typo here. So let me correct that. But then here on the, yeah. So the typo was, I didn't uh, keep the order of, how I want you to structure your bicep training intensity properly. I'll make those changes. I think the, that typo might actually still be in there. So sorry about that. But anyway, day one starts off the same as day three in the odd week. So I know it's similar to like ABAB or BAB or something of that nature, right? Day three, very similar to 
day one and then day five it's kind of like this is where like the difference kind of shows out again because you're going to do the pause squat or the box squat and overhead press variation so here like dumbbells machines seated you're just trying to get more volume just trying to build more muscle because i do think that when it comes down to actually having a aesthetic physique shoulders traps are going to um make your upper body stand out way more than just benching just chest like you need to include these movements then some remaining deadlift or stick leg, stiff leg deadlifts followed by horizontal pulls and biceps so that is the program very uh, cut and dry and simple i kind of ran uh, rushed through even week just because there are similarities across the days just ordered slightly differently main difference is you're squatting twice a week this on this week you're deadlifting once a week and bench pressing once a week here but the thing is on this bench day it is the strength focus because strength is really good at maintaining size so it doesn't really make sense for you to do a size day because then you are going to become not as acclimated toward heavy lifting when you go back into the odd week so to mitigate that that's why the um deadlift bench day is heavy or strength focused because strength is just a big, does a better job at maintaining size than vice versa so that's the program now let's think of some modifications okay or look at some modifications if recovery allows free weight pulling is always going to be better so for the vertical pulls and the horizontal pulls one thing that I would really like is if you do chin-ups and inverted rows. If you were to do chin-ups and inverted rows, I recommend that you do them for as many reps as possible, but stopping before failure, so maybe two to three reps in reserve. I think that's kind of a, a better way to kind of implement that if you decide to use more free weight options. Now, if you're going to use like cables, machines, or something of that nature, it's fine to just um, stick with that. I have a bias toward the freeway movements. However, when it comes to building muscle, lat pull downs, seated cable rows are great movements and they are not as fatiguing. Now, free weight exercises, body weight exercises, they aren't as fatiguing as compounds, but they're definitely way more fatiguing than cables and machines where you can kind of select the weight. So that's kind of the uh, trade off you're experiencing there. Next is the fourth training day. So if you like looking at the program, it's like, where the hell was the fourth training day? Where, 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 where was that even? So the fourth training day is highly recommended if recovery allows. I really, you really don't need to be thinking too much about a fourth training day. If you are just too sore from these three training days, wait until your fitness, your overall conditioning improves where you can add that fourth training day. Now on that fourth training day, I'm going to be giving options um, in the future as to what you can do. There is a video I posted yesterday of talking about a PT pyramid made by a former Navy SEAL. That's a great GPP calisthenics based workout that could work very well as your gap training day, your gap day, your GPP day, your calisthenics work or something of that nature. If you were to do, let's say, a light accessory day where you kind of go in and just do some uh, isolation exercises. So like a bodybuilding day, a pump day, something of that nature. Exercises that I would highly recommend you include hamstring curls, back extensions, lateral raises, rear delt work. Triceps, you can throw that in there too. So you can do something like uh, JM pressing, you can do something like uh, skull crushers, uh, reverse curls, you know, do some movements such as that, make it an arm day. And then you throw on these other exercises like hamstring curls, back extensions, and work that the compound lifts just don't hit. The compound exercises, the squat bench and deadlift, they don't hit your side delts. They, don't, they won't build your um, delts properly. They won't build your back properly. It won't keep your legs healthy if all you do is squat and deadlift. You need to throw in these other things. You need to work on the lower back. You need to work on the hamstring um, in the way that it inserts into the knee, not just the hip. So those are movements that I highly recommend you throw in with this program on that fourth training day. But they can also be done supersetted with the accessory work. So let's say you do a superset of um, lat pull downs and lateral raises or lat pull downs and back extensions. If it's convenient enough, hamstring curls and lat pull down. Or you can bring over the dumbbells to the hamstring curl, do dumbbell curls and, ha and hamstring curls, bicep curls and hamstring curls. If your gym allows that kind of stuff, that's more than fine. Uh, back extensions and biceps, biceps and lateral raises, rear delt work and biceps. There's a bunch of different ways that you can put together some supersets to get in more work. That way a fourth training day might not be necessary. You get you're only in the gym three times a week you get more rest days get more time for work family relationships whatever but you're still hitting all your bases or if you do want to go into the gym you can have that fourth training day where you do calisthenics you do light accessory works and then you go from there and your recovery allows and you're still able to train for strength 
go on with your merry day so that is the program i think yep that is the program nothing else to say about that if you have any questions please let me know i'd be more than happy to hear your feedback my name is Carlos the king stanstrain.com thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a great day have a good one